Basically, there wasn't a specific point in my career that I just said, okay, now I'm just going to focus on in uh, music. It kind of uh, happened naturally. Um, I've been DJing for the last 12 years, I think. Yeah, 12 years and uh, mainly in Israel. And then when I was, I think, 27 or 28, I decided to also start producing and then I just was uh, really into it. It was in the past three years. Um, yeah, and that's it, you know. I'm, it's important to me to say that I'm not like the typical guy who was producing music uh, since he was a child. Um, actually, a lot of years I, I haven't thought that I'm kind of a gifted for producing music. I thought that I'm only going to be a good DJ. Um, but then when time passed and I start producing uh, like later, so then I realized that it's only a matter of um, it's only a matter of consistency. Um, and if you really want something, and if you want, really want to be a good producer, so just do it a lot of hours, day to night, for a few years, and then it will happen. So uh, for any of you out there who is still, uh, who is kind of an old, and you think maybe he's too old for it, so uh, for art and for music generally, there's no age. So. Yeah, that's it. So uh, about Terra, um, I think uh, we started Terra five years ago. Uh, we were in a point in the Israeli scene when the techno and house start to really rise and more in the in the clubs. But we really wanted to start to make more outdoor event. Uh, which is more common if you go into a trance parties in Israel, but it's not that common for the house and techno scene. So uh, we start uh, like uh, with, uh, with the really small parties, uh, underground parties in beautiful location around Israel. And we were getting bigger uh, in each event, but uh, maintain really high quality of level of music and crowd. And um, now, after five years, I'm super proud of uh, Terra. I think we have a beautiful, beautiful uh, brand for parties and also for people. Uh, I can say that the crowd is really uh, devoted and they know each other. And all the DJs that are coming are really excited because it feels like kind of a music community. Um, yeah, and uh, our last party was actually uh, in Purim holiday. It was like two weeks before all this Corona situation started. Uh, and it was amazing party in the desert. I played there a sunrise set with a lot of original uh, materials. And that set was really um, kind of a big thing for me. And we probably gonna you're gonna see us a lot in the future when we're gonna have when the big events gonna come back. Uh, it's a big question. I think uh, the last proper night as a DJ I had this year be before the Corona was a huge night for me. Um, I was playing in the Lunar Festival uh, with, in the Purim holiday and it was a crowd of, I think, 8,000 people. And I was playing back to back with Miragami there. And we, we played the main set because there was a lot of cancellation from artists abroad. And then we were on stage for a huge amount of crowd. Uh, and 
also I think like half an hour before our set we decided to only play original stuff and a lot of new stuff that we haven't actually played before and the set were really successful and then from that from that gig I went to Jerusalem and I played I played uh, in a party inside a, in a party inside a museum it was an amazing party um, also holiday parties uh, is really big here and I remember that I finished that night um, after two amazing gigs and I, I was really happy and I, I knew that it was gonna be kind of a peak for my career and uh, now things gonna change um, so yeah I'm definitely gonna remember that night all my life I don't think there, there is a specific place that I uh, was uh, more more unique for me. Um, just I'm just enjoy playing everywhere. Uh, the thing about about playing in different countries is that every country has its own culture, uh, and the, the culture they have, everyone reacts differently to the music. So it's really. The challenge when you play abroad, I think, is to make the, the connection with the crowd um, because, you know, they have a different mentality, but you're still looking to get that connection when you know that you play and you have something with the crowd. So there's not something specifically that I was, there's not a place specifically that I enjoy more than other places. Um, in the end, good party is a good party, you know, it's just, just trying to make that magic happen between the DJ and the crowd. And when that happens, so that's when you know that you tell yourself, okay, that's the reason I'm doing this, I'm doing this and that's the reason this is my job because that kind of uh, connection and magic you have with the crowd is, um, is an amazing thing to experience. I think um, it's not a specific one moment, it's just a lot of moments when you're super tired and you need to balance your day-to-day -day job and then you have a gig so you can wake up early and then you know that you're going to play it in five or six in the morning um, in the night after so the, the, the difficult thing is that um, it's really hard to when you have a lot of um, gigs, which is a good thing, sometimes your sleeping habits and your health is, uh, get infected by it. And the difficult is to, to find the balance that works for you. Um, because like in the end, our body does need to, uh, you need to sleep in the night. That's, uh, that's the common thing and then when you every night go out and then you play so it's really exhausted and not easy for the body but then when you do it for a lot of years you understand that this is part of the business and usually this is where the magic happens when you actually push yourself hard and also usually the, if you have three gigs in a row for three days, so usually the best ones are the, the last ones because they're getting like warm up. So yeah, I think that the main difficulty is just to balance the day-to-day -day life with, uh, with the nightlife, but it's okay. It's, I think it's a tough question because there's always those producers that you hear the track and they just blow your mind and you're like sitting in your um, in your studio and you like start thinking what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's some amazing producers out there. I think if I have the opportunity, I would be happy to uh, make a track with Porte because he is exceptional. Um, but also I'm really happy that I have the, the option to just jam now with my friends, you know, it's, we know each other and 
uh, we worked together for a lot of years uh, and it's uh, it's really easier when you do music with your friends because you have that connection uh, but I would be super happy to to be in the studio with Forte I like the way he thought he's thinking yeah that's all <laughs> Thank you.